First speaker is Marjorie Cohn. Yeah. She's a professor yes, at Thomas, Thomas Jefferson School of Law Woo! and past president of the National Lawyers Guild. Woo! She's co-author of Rules of Disengagement, The Politics of Honor and Military Dissent. All right. She testifies Woo! at military hearings about the illeg illegality of wars. Marjorie. Yeah. his arrest in May of 2010, Bradley has been treated like one of America's most dangerous traitors. He faces more than 30 charges, including one called aiding the enemy that carries the death penalty. Bullshit. Now prosecutors say they're going to recommend life in prison, but the judges still retain the discretion to sentence him to die if he's convicted, if he goes to court martial and he's convicted. Bradley has been in prison for 19 months without a trial. Yesterday he had what is called an Article 32 hearing at Fort Meade, Maryland, um, where an investigating officer takes testimony for a few days to decide whether there's enough evidence to send him to a court martial. Bradley's civilian lawyer, David Coombs, challenged the impartiality of the investigating officer um, saying that his employment at the Department of Justice and uh, which, which has conducted the investigation on Bradley and Julian Assange and WikiLeaks makes him not an impartial judge. The defense has requested the right to call 38 witnesses um, and, uh, <clears throat> And unfortunately, the judge is only allowing two defense witnesses, other than the ten that the prosecutor uh, approves of. So, David Coombs filed a writ in the Military um, Criminal Court of Criminal Appeals, uh, Army Court of Criminal Appeals, and uh, they'll decide whether or not to sustain his challenge to the judge on impartiality gra uh, grounds but I wouldn't hold my breath on that. Um, Coombs is also arguing that the investigating officer wrongfully denied a defense request to call witnesses um, who can testify about the standards for classifying information so that they can get to, get um, under, uh, uh, analyze and expose the standards for what is classified and what isn't classified and the documents that Bradley Manning is accused of leaking were not labeled top secret, although they were classified. Now, the most serious charges against him require the proof of intent. Aiding the enemy is going to be the most difficult. That requires the prosecutors to show that there's reasonable grounds to believe that he knowingly gave intelligence to the enemy. Uh, but in the chat logs, there is no reference to uh, aiding foreign enemies. So that may be difficult for them to prove. Um, the second most serious charge is violating the Espionage Act. And that requires showing that Bradley had reason to believe that the information that, was, that he disclosed could be used used to injure the United States to the advantage of any foreign nation. Um, again, that could be hard to prove. Um, the hearing is going to make a recommendation, the, the investigating officer in this Article 32 hearing, which is still going on through the weekend and will go on into next week, will make a recommendation about whether Bradley should be sent to a court-martial um, to the commander of the military district of Washington. And that commander could do several things, could agree to send him to court-martial if that's what the investigating officer recommends, um, could give him an administrative punishment or dismiss some or all of the 22 counts against him. Now for nine... Yeah. Good idea. For, for nine months, Bradley was held in solitary confinement in the, Quantico, in the military brig at Quantico, Virginia. Solitary confinement is considered to be a form of torture. Yes. It can lead to hallucinations, to catatonia, and to even suicide. He was also 
um, made to strip naked and stand for inspection while other inmates walked by, and this was, oh. uh, and, and then and then made to sleep in a coarse gown that was supposed to be a suicide gown, even though a top psychiatrist said he was not a suicide threat at all. And it was only after citizens like us, and I'm proud to say 250 law professors, including me, sent Woo! letters to, to Obama saying, wait a minute, yeah. and there was so much pressure, and that's of course what they respond to is pressure, that he was then transferred to Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, where he's being treated humanely, in, in other words, not being tortured. Um, <clears throat> now, oh, and, and Obama, Obama was, when he was, he was being held in Quantico, Obama was asked about it, and Obama said, and this is a quote, I've actually asked the Pentagon whether or not the procedures are appropriate. They assured me they are. <laughs> now that was like George Bush, um, who said, well, uh, the, uh, my senior legal officers in the, in the U.S. government told me it wasn't torture, so it wasn't torture. Right. <laughs> um, State Department spokesman P.J. Crowley resigned over Bradley's treatment, he called the restrictions on Bradley ridiculous, counterproductive, and stupid. Woo! Actually, the White House forced him to resign yes. because they seemed to be more concerned about stopping would-be whistleblowers um, than, uh, than humane treatment. Now, let me just detail a few of the things that Bradley is alleged to have done. And one is allegedly disclosing what is called collateral murder which is a classified video depicting U.S. troops shooting civilians from an Apache helicopter in Iraq in July 2007. Um, the U.S. military Apache helicopter soldiers can be seen killing 12 civilians and wounding two children. Um, the dead included two employees of Reuters news agency. Um, it, the video shows U.S. forces watching as a van pulled up to evacuate the wounded. They again opened fire from the helicopter, killing more people. And during the radio chatter between the helicopter crew members and their supervisors, one crew member gloated after the first shooting, saying, oh yeah, look at those dead bastards. One Iraqi witness told Amy Goodman, they didn't have any weapons or arms of any sort. This area doesn't have armed insurgents. The man that they drove over, and they killed and wounded and drove over their bodies. Um, and uh, he had been shot while he was still alive. The, and, and the American tank drove over him and cut him in half. Ugh. Um, Commanders decided that the wounded children would not be taken to a U.S. military field hospital. And Ethan McCord, one of the soldiers on the scene who picked up one of the children and tried to take him to a military vehicle, was reprimanded wow. for his response. Wow. Um, in my opinion, the collateral murder video that Bradley Manning is accused to have leaked to WikiLeaks depicts possible, three possible violations of the Geneva Conventions. Geneva Conventions are part of U.S. law because it's a treaty the United States has ratified. One is targeting, targeting civilians who do not pose a threat, not for military necessity. And that's the first violation of Geneva. Secondly, preventing the rescue of wounded people. And third, disrespecting dead bodies by driving over the bodies. Um, Bradley is also being investigated for allegedly leaking the Afghan diaries, the Gitmo files, and the Iraqi war, log, war, war logs. And many of these were published on WikiLeaks in, in uh, coordination with the New York Times, the UK Guardian, and the German magazine Der Spiegel. Now, if Bradley had murdered civilians and desecrated their corpses. If he had committed war crimes, not exposed them, he would be a free man today. Um, if Bradley had intentionally killed unarmed civilians, posed for pictures with their dead bodies, and slashed their fingers off as souvenirs, he would not have had his guilt publicly pronounced by the Commander-in-Chief, Barack Obama, who said, quote, he broke the law, unquote. Now keep in mind, we do have a presumption of innocence in this country, and that means that people are presumed to be innocent unless and until proven guilty. And Bradley Manning had not even seen a judge at that point when Barack Obama 
said that he had broken the law. Ooh. Had Bradley, instead of him exposing the crimes, been the one pulling the trigger in the U.S. Apache helicopter that murdered at least a dozen un unarmed people, he would not be, he would be a free man today because none of those people have been prosecuted, right. investigated, or prosecuted. Bradley described how reading classified documents made for him for the first time aware of the breadth of the corruption and violence committed by his country and allies. He explained that he wanted the world to know what he had learned. He said, I want people to see the truth regardless of who they are, because without information, you cannot make you informed decisions as, as a public. That's right. By exposing some of the worst atrocities committed by the U.S. forces in Iraq, <clears throat> the documents prevented the Iraqi government from agreeing to give our soldiers immunity, which is what Obama wanted to continue the war rather than end the war. And therefore, if Bradley Manning is guilty of what he is accused of, he is also guilty of helping to end the Iraq war. Right. Yes. Yes. He also, all, these cables also traveled around the world and shed light on the corruption of Tunisia's ruling family and therefore helped to spark the Arab Spring. The charges against Bradley end with this language. Such conduct being prejudicial to good order and discipline in the armed forces and being of a nature to bring discredit upon the armed forces. Uh, yeah. On the contrary, if Bradley Manning did what he is suspected of doing, he should be honored as an American hero for exposing yeah. war crimes and helping to end the war. Thank you.